Let's begin by considering two genes that are on the same chromosome, A and B. We say that two genes that are on the same chromosome are syntenic. And we can write that these two genes are syntenic by using a slash or a bar like this. And so let's say that this individual has big A and big B on one of the homologous chromosomes, and they have little a and little b on the other homologous chromosome. And now let's do a test cross. And remember that a test cross is a cross with a fully homozygous recessive individual. And it's useful because the phenotypes of the resulting offspring are a direct reflection of the gametes that are produced by the heterozygote. When we do this cross, what do we see? Well, we usually see big A, big B individuals and little a, little b individuals. And that makes sense because this heterozygote passed on this chromosome or it passed on this chromosome. However, we will often also see heterozygotes as well, like a big A little b or a little a big b. What's going on here? Well, the answer is that crossing over is going on here. Right. So recall that in prophase one of meiosis, homologous chromosomes line up like this. So if this is chromosome number one, here's chromosome number two. Let's imagine that A and B are here. And remember, we are post S phase. And so these chromosomes are made of two chromatids, right? And so if this is the situation in the middle of prophase of meiosis one, then these chromosomes line up and then crossing over happens and they will swap pieces. And so you might see a swap that results in one chromatid that stays herp one chromatid that stays big A, big B, but perhaps this chromatid is now big A, little b, because it's picked up this piece from this chromatid over here. And similarly, now this one is, sorry, little A, big B, and little a, little b, right? And so remember then that as meiosis continues that you end up with four gametes, right? That have these four chromatids in them. And this gamete is the parental type. This gamete is the parental type. And these gametes we say are recombinants. All right, so again, those two gametes we call parental, and these two gametes right here, because they've had the swapping, the, the uh, swapping over happen, we call them the recombinant types. So there are a few things to note about this recombination. The first is that it seems intuitive, but it bears repeating, I'm sorry, it bears stating explicitly that the probability of crossing over between two locations on a chromosome depends on how far apart they are on the DNA molecule, right? If crossing overs happen randomly, which is an assumption that we're gonna come back to in a little bit, if, but if they happen randomly, then the further apart two genes are, the more likely it is that a crossing over will happen between them and the two alleles will recombine. 
And the second thing that I think bears pointing out is that crossing over is surprisingly frequent, right? This isn't a rare event. In fact, in humans, it happens at least once per chromosome. There's even some data indicating that the process of meiosis pauses until crossing over has happened at least once on all of the chromosomes. And that means that even genes that are on the same chromosome Genes that are syntenic can be unlinked if they are far enough apart. And this idea may seem a little counterintuitive, but as we begin to consider linkage in more quantitative terms, I think it'll become clear. And so we'll start by detecting linkage using a chi-square test, and that's next.